Today, I play one of the biggest pots of my entire life under the bright lights of Hustler Live. With over $115,000 in the pot, am I punting it off or finally winning a big one? My heart is pounding with life-changing money exchanging hands right here in this poker hand. Let's dive right into the action. The stakes are 5-5-100, and I start off with $50,000 as a buy-in into this session here, and we're playing with a bunch of tough opponents on this table, ready to battle it out on a full live stream here in Hustler Live. And let's get into it. One of the first hands, I pick up 9-7 off suit. There's a $200 straddle on, which I may or not be putting on. Anyways, the Raisuke, who bought in for $100,000, raises it up to $600 from the button. Action folds around to me, and, you know, I have a pretty marginal hand, but I didn't come here to fold for $400 more. I make the call and see a flop of Jack-6-5-2 diamonds. Flopping a gutshot straight draw, I decided to start off with a check. Rasuke bets out $300 here, and starting off this session, I am just simply in no mood to fold a straight draw right now. Here, early and often, let's start the gambling right now. With a gutshot straight draw, I check raise to $1,400, thinking that I'm just going to apply a lot of pressure to the hands that, you know, don't really connect a lot with this board, you know, ace highs, king highs, queen highs, etc. Anyways, Rasuke doesn't take too long before making the call. I might be a little bit in trouble here, but when the turn comes, the ace of hearts brings in two flush draws now. Now, potentially with an ace, I might be able to put some pressure on a jack x holding, unless he has ace jack, which would be pretty bad. I start off with another small bet of $1,200, making it look like I'm betting for value, even though I only have nine high. Anyways, Raisuke may know I have some punting tendencies because he quickly makes the call once again. Now we're going off to a river, which comes the nine of diamonds. Front door flush rock gets there. I end up hitting a pair, but I can't expect my pair to be good. So let's just continue our story saying, I have a strong hand. If he has a flush draw, then I'm beat. And if he has a jack, then maybe I can get him to fold. I size to 2,400. And this time, it's not a sweat. He folds rather quickly. And it's nice to get my bluff through early on in the session, winning early on. And the game only gets bigger. About 30, 40 minutes into the session, I add on for another $50,000 and top up. All you have to know is just expect some bigger pots to happen. And let's get ready. So about two hours into the stream now, we get involved in a big hand with Grant in the cutoff raising to $600 as there's a $200 straddle on. I peel ace jack off suit in the big blind and having some mixed feelings about raising or calling. In this game specifically, I opted for just a call, although I think either is fine. The $200 straddler calls as well. So three ways to a flop of jack four six all hearts. With top pair, top kicker feeling pretty good about my hand so far, action checks to Grant and he bets out $700. I think I have a pretty easy decision to continue with a call. Raising would be quite the overplay. So I make the call and the other player folds. Heads up to a turn which comes a six. All right, so when the middle card pairs, I think it's going to favor me a lot more. On top of that, I think this is a card that's going to be checking back a lot of the time, so I just want to get value from one heart holdings or maybe even a worse jack. In game, I decided to lead out here for about half pot for $1,500. And now onto Grant, who is in position, and he just makes the call. So he doesn't raise here over my lead. I think I'm ahead. We're going to a river, which comes the three of diamonds. Complete brick doesn't change the board at all, and I'm just going to stick to the plan, expecting my hand to be good. I'm going to bet for value, maybe get called by King Jack, Queen Jack, who knows. I bet about 3500 and quickly get snap called by Grant. I see the bad news. I actually was not good. This turn card that I thought was good for me ends up being disastrous, and his trips are going to win. I lose a few thousand here, but that's not going to stop me from trying to battle back in the next hand where I put on the $400 straddle. That's what we're doing, I guess. Playing 5-5, five, five, 200, 400. The cutoff who starts off the action by calling the $400, which incentivizes the button, small blind, big blind, under the gun. They all limp in for $400, and all of a sudden, I peel Jack-10 of diamonds. This seems like a pretty fun hand to play, and I think it's a pretty good spot to squeeze with so many people in the middle. I don't want to see a flop 18 ways, so I raise it up to $2,600. Might be a little bit on the small side, to be honest, but... I'm not sure what to do. Anyways, it folds all the way around only to the small blind player, and he makes the call. So it looks like he's here to battle. Same opponent from last hand. We're going to go heads up, and I'm in position to a flop, which comes king, 10, 8, rainbow. 
he starts off with a check and I'm sitting with middle pair on this board. I think I'm allowed to just check a lot of the time. I don't get too much value from many hands and I also can be up against better hands as well. So I decide to check this one. Turn comes a bank 10, improved to trips. And when Grant checks again, Definitely time to go for some value. I'm 100% betting such a strong hand now, and I size to $1,800. Lots of draws and pairs that I can get called by here, and Grant does come along and make the call. I'm excited to see I have action, and the river comes, the three of spades. It's a total brick, and when Grant checks a third time, obviously I know my hand is good, but I'm mainly thinking about how much I want to bet for value. I'm thinking that if I bet any amount, I'm really only going to get called by a king here. And with my brief history with Grant, he might think that I might be bluffing with a big bet. And also knowing that this player is also up a lot of money already on this stream, he might be more willing to call a big bet with just one pair. So let's size way the hell up, target a king to call, and I size it up to 13.5k. Pretty hefty over bet here, and I don't really represent a whole lot of value, a whole lot of strong hands, besides holding exactly a 10. On top of that, I also have a lot of bluffs that I can bet here that big as well. But when Grant goes deep into the tank holding his king, all I'm doing is praying, praying, praying for a call. If he makes the call, it'll obviously help me get unstuck for the whole day. So let's root for it. He goes back and forth, on and on with his motions between calling and folding, and really doesn't look happy. But then he arrives at a decision, which is a fold. Damn it. So close. Would have loved to get paid, but props to my opponent Grant here for making a really good fold. If you know me, I would have called in his exact spot and lost $13,000, but I'm not Grant. He's a solid player, and I don't get paid in this spot, sadly. Following him, we get into action gets off the rails as I get encouraged to put on the $800 straddle. Absolute madness in this game, and I'm not one to stop other people from having a good time, so we're playing 5-5, five, five, 200, 400, 800. The stakes have ballooned up. Action starts with a button who raises to $2,800 on like an $8,000 stack. And when action folds to me on the 800 straddle, I peel king jack off suit. Ah, so annoying. This hand is just good enough to have to play. If I had king 10 off suit, probably would just be a fold or a call, but this player has about 10 big blinds in his stack. We're playing $800 bigs, I guess, in this specific hand, and feels like I'm in tournament mode, and I don't know if John is raising super light, but given the straddles, 10 big blinds is 10 big blinds. YOLO! I go all in with King Jack off suits, and John is hesitant, but ultimately arrives on a call. It's bad news, as I see I'm dominated. He wants to run it twice, and let's just sweat out two runouts, I guess. They're lucky for Rampage. Oh, oh, oh okay. They're all rooting for Big John. You can hear it. The first runout comes Jack high, so the money would have gone in regardless if we saw a flop or not. <laughs> <laughs> all right, John, look away. Look how you do it. I don't want to hear no. Oh, he's all the space. Oh, yeah. okay, good. Good all right, Rampage is going to double up Big John. <laughs> Young <laughs> Stir is a gentleman. Runner out number two, he flops in ace, and I do not improve to Broadway on the runout. So, <sighs> unfortunate spot here. I give him $8,000. It's a lot of money, but it's only 10 big blinds given the straddles. Moving on from the degeneracy, and just kidding, yeah, more degeneracy. I am back in the $800 straddle this hand because Jay Boogs, the player to my left, said that he'd put on the $1,600. Well, that's an offer I can't refuse, so this is even more ridiculous, this next hand. It's 5-5, five, five, 200, 800, 400, 1600, all the straddles, a couple hundred, too much money in the middle. Massive game right now. So action folds all the way back around to the player to my right on the $400 straddle. He's staying with about $40,000 in his stack, which is about 25 big blinds here, and he decides on a raise to 5,000. What the hell are we playing, man? And, you know, I just want an easy decision. I peel king-queen offsuit. Oh my god. This is quite the opposite of an easy decision, and every single thought goes through my head here. Can I fold? Can I call? Can I raise? My experience in tournaments have taught me how to play short stacked, and here we are. I think I just have to go for it. It's just insane. It's 25 big blinds. I'm only trying to think about it in big blinds, but it's hard to knock how much money and US dollar value is going to be all in here. It's insane. It's a $40,000 jam. Ah. <sighs> 
it's a lot, but here we are. It's a big spot. I take my time, but ultimately I know that all in is the right decision. I close my eyes and just do it. Announce all in. Luckily, Jay Boogs didn't have a strong hand and snap folds immediately, so that's only one out of the two folds that I needed so far. Now onto Santa, player to my right, and he thinks about it for a while, and my heart is just pumping. It's pretty clear while he's thinking he either has a small pair or an ace, and both of which I am basically flipping with. So yeah, it could be an $80,000 pot, and that's super scary, but ultimately he ends up finding a fold. Phew, all right. Anta asks for a sweat and to see the full run out, and what's crazy is I actually would have hit a straight on the river for Broadway. Oh my god, I would have made over $40,000 if he called. So be it, whatever, I'll take it down, take down $7,000 preflop. I guess I broke even from that last hand where I jammed King Jack. All of this action and madness has led up to this point. I'm in early position with 9-8 of hearts, and I raise it up to $600. Action folds around to Nick, and he picks up a premium and three bets to 2,000. Folds back to me. Me and him are playing plenty deep, and we've played plenty of big pots together as well. Why not play another one? So here we are, time to battle again against one of the best. I make the call out of position. We're off to a flop, which comes ace, six, seven, rainbow. Not a heart here, but I'm open-ended with a straight draw. I start off with a check out of position, and Nick fires out 2,000. Seems like a pretty hefty bet in this three-bet pot, but okay, here we are facing this bet. I'm obviously never folding my straight draw here, but I think sometimes I can contemplate about check raising if there was a heart on the board, but I'm not going to raise here in this specific hand. I just make the call and hope for a bink 10. Oh my god, finally, I have the nuts in a massive three-bet pot. Is it my time to finally win a big one? I am so happy to see this 10. I have the nuts, and I check. Nick continues again with another bet, and it's a pretty damn big one of $7,000, and I am just loving life, fist pumping so hard in my head right now, and I'm just hoping Nick has a strong hand, obviously, hoping he has ace-king, ace-queen, ace-10, anything to get paid. And I'm looking at his stack and just mainly thinking of how can I get all the money in by the river here? He has about $45,000, $50,000 in his stack from my point of view. And I think a small check raise here would give him a really good price to call turn and then potentially call a river shove. So that is what I elect on doing. I check raise to 19,000 pot is getting serious now. It's only 12,000 more for him to call. And like I said, this is going to set up a pretty easy river shove. I just need Nick to call this turn bet first though. Before we start having dreams about the river, he needs to call first. Like I said, I'm mainly putting him on a strong ace, ace 10, or potentially sometimes a spade draw. Unless he has pocket tens, that's the only set that makes sense. But ultimately for 12,000 more, he ends up making the call. Okay, Lauren, dealer, one time, one clean river, please. River is a six. Ah, that hurts a little bit. It's not the nuts. I don't have the nuts anymore as any set or maybe some weird two-pair combo improves to a full house. It's scary because the pot is ballooned up and I lose to sets that improve to boats now, but I just ultimately don't think I can slow down even with the board paired. It's scary, but I have to stick to the plan, and I put Nick all in about $35,000 effective. And my main scare was that if Nick ever snap called, I don't feel good, but he doesn't snap call. Now I know I have this pot, and I have the winner. All I'm hoping for now is that Nick takes his time and ends up electing on a call. If he makes the call, this will be one of my biggest moments in Hustler so far. This will be the biggest pot I've ever won in my entire life. Nick goes on and on and does some inventory and some counting. And ultimately, he says... The only thing I, I just can't... I can't put you on a hand, man. Okay, you got it. Oh. Tosses in a chip in the middle. Let's freaking go. I show my hand. The straight, it's going to win over a hundred and fifteen thousand freaking dollar pot comes my way. An absolute mountain pile of chips. Holy hell, it finally happened. I won my big pot. Big kudos to Nick, whom has still beaten me lifetime with 
how many times I've lost a lot of big pots against him. He always takes winning and losing really well. And in this specific instance, I'm just glad I got super lucky to bink the straight and get paid. It's such a surreal feeling to win this insanely massive pot. $115,000. That's that's going to buy a couple of cars for sure, or at least a down payment on a home. And to win it on live stream is awesome. So big shout out to everyone that watched it live. Appreciate you guys tuning in. Appreciate you guys always supporting the channel. I certainly wouldn't have been here, wouldn't have had this opportunity to play all these games without all of your support. Um, Rampage well, tweet from last night. Idea. One day I'll win on this show. An hour later, he wins a 120k pot. For one of the last hands on the stream, I pick up aces in the cutoff. Let's keep this momentum going. I raise things up to $600 with a 200 straddle on, and I get the button, small blind, and big blind to call. So multi-way, don't love it. We're off to a flop of jack, four, five, rainbow. And on a board that should rarely connect with the things that I'm raising with, I think I can check a lot. So action checks to me, I check, and action checks around. Going to see a turn, which comes a king. Not a bad card here, I guess, and the big blind decides to bet out $400. And when Grant decides to make the call, definitely think I can sometimes just call or also just raise. Definitely seems like there's more value in raising because I don't really want to go multi-way to a river. It would be very profitable potentially to just thin out the field with just my one pair. So let's go for a raise. Get some more value from one pair holdings. I raise it up to 2400 and upon this raise, I immediately get punished as the big blind does not have one pair. He three bets to 8,000. Grant gets out of the way and folds, and uh, this is not a fun spot to be in, given, like I said, I only have one pair. It's an over pair, it's the best pair, yada, 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 but it's not comfortable. If there's anyone who's capable of potentially raising here as a bluff, it's Raisuke. He's a really good and capable opponent, and I don't feel comfortable here, but I decided to stick around to the river. Maybe I improved a two pair or something like that, but who knows, I make the call for $5,600 more, and we're going to a river which comes a queen. Pretty disastrous card for me here. I basically lose to so much, a lot really. And you know what's even worse with one pair? Raisuke bets out $11,000, and I think about this spot for a little bit. It's a big pot, it's a big bet I'm facing, and I'm just trying to talk myself into a call, or if I can ever call. Are there any bluffs here in this spot given this line? Or are there any hands that I even beat? Doesn't seem like it, to be honest. So when I arrive to this conclusion, if I can't even talk myself into a call, I fold the aces, and Raisuke is nice enough to show me the goods with King Jack. Nice hand to him, and I give some back a little bit before the stream ends. We hop into some post-stream madness. Play a few hands while the game is still going, and in this hand we're playing 5-5, five, five, 100, 200, Playing only four-handed, and I pick up ace, four of clubs. I'm on the button and raising's up to $500, and I get the small blind and under the gun straddler to make the call. So three ways in position to the flop of king, nine, five, two clubs. Action checks to me and sitting with the nut flush draw. Certainly could bet a lot of the time, but in this instance, I decided to check multi-way. Disguise the strength of my hand, and the turn comes the queen of diamonds. Not the card I wanted to see. And when the cutoff player bets out 1,200, player to my right, I'm obviously not going to go anywhere with the nut flush draw. I make the call. Other player folds, and we're going heads up to a river, which comes a three. Sitting bricked out, do not have the flush. The cutoff player continues again for a bet of 3,200, and unfortunately, I am just going to snap fold. Lose about $1,700 here in this hand. Lose a little bit off stream. And for one of the last interesting hands of the night, this one was such a crazy session. I pick up a premium in ace king off suit in the cutoff. It's a hijack call of $200, so he limped in. And yeah, 200 is not going to stand. I raise things up to 700. Button on my left makes the call, and now the big blind player puts in a three bet, and it's a sizable one. A three bet to $4,000. Oh my God. This player is playing about $50,000 deep. Okay, I'm in position here. I certainly could four bet sometimes, but against a very perceived strong range, I decided on just flatting and making the call. Maybe we can see a good flop in position of this player, but what's even more surprising, the button player also calls as well. So it's a three-way, multi-way pot and a three-bet pot. There's already more than $12,000 in the middle. How insane is this? And the flop comes King Jack 8-2 hearts. 
Sitting with the ace of hearts, not a bad feeling with top top here. The big blind continues to bet out $5,000. Pretty big bet here in multi-way, and I do lose to pocket jacks, which would be pretty rough. But obviously, I can't assume I'm up against the nuts all the time. I'm not going anywhere with top pair, top kicker. I make the call, and the button folds. So now, heads up to a turn, which comes the deuce of spades. Brings in a backdoor flush draw, and this player surprisingly slows down and checks. Now, definitely thinking I can easily bet for value, but uh, yeah, still loses some hands, and sitting with the ace of hearts, I think... I think I have a better feeling about not being up against a flush draw. So with those reasons said, I decide to check this one back. Play this a little bit deceptively, and we're going to the river, which comes the deuce of hearts. Now the front door flush gets there. Board is paired, but doesn't really mean a whole lot. And when my opponent checks it over once again, all right, it's pretty clear I have to go for value, but I don't think I can bet super large here. So try and get called by... Queens, King Queen, King 10, I guess, maybe. I don't know. I don't really get a whole lot of value from much, but here we are. I size to $8,500. This player thinks out loud, and when he thinks out loud, it's a pretty clear tell that I think top pair, top kicker is going to win. He says he doesn't beat a whole lot and ultimately ends up calling. I show my hand, Ace King, and it's going to win. Nice pot to get scooped my way. Not sure what my opponent had, but... It's always a great feeling to end the night off with a winning hand. Hi, friends. I'm back in my car. Um, I drove to where I'm staying here in LA, California. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I, this is, this, <laughs> I don't know what to say. Uh, very grateful for the opportunity. This session was insane. I'm looking at my poker app right now and the number is astonishing way too high unbelievable pretty much like obviously hasn't settled in but uh i cashed out did all that stuff and um i don't know really fortunate and grateful to uh, finally win a freaking pot against nick and to turn the nuts it's just easy and and comfortable to play i guess in a big pot because i have the nuts the river little little sus when the board paired but i feel fortunate and grateful to have this opportunity uh i'm gonna go through the the, the chat uh, of the live stream and see what you guys said but thank you to everybody who has supported me thank you to the haters who motivate me to uh continue showing up continue trying to just play better show up and grind prove you guys wrong uh it's the biggest motivator to be very honest with you but uh yeah i don't know i mean just three years ago i was dreaming about being able to play uh poker and make this youtube channel work be able to make i remember making two thousand dollars per month at one three was the goal and i'd be really really happy at hitting it and let's go over the numbers i was in the game i bought in for a hundred and twenty five thousand dollars i tipped a good amount and i cashed out for one hundred and ninety six thousand five hundred and ninety five dollars that is a profit of 71,595 freaking dollars. I will screenshot uh, this, maybe put it on the screen. Like, I just can't believe that this number is real. I don't know if you guys can see that that well. I don't know. It's a lot of money, and I played for eight hours, seven hours of cash. It's incredible. So I'm back tomorrow at Hustler. The next video, we're playing 2550, probably straddle is on. This game was fucking enormous with like 15, uh, $1,600 straddle sometimes. There was an $1,800 straddle, $800 straddles pretty consistently, 400 straddle throughout the whole night, or at least near the, the last half of the, of the session. We we're playing like 1, 2, 4, 100, 200, 400 stakes. Incredible. Thanks so much for watching. I'm going to go get some sleep and I'm ready for tomorrow. But thank you again for everyone who supports the channel. Leave a like. It means a lot. Thank you for all the support. Um, if you follow me on Instagram or Twitter, I'll, I'll post some stuff. And uh, I'm overwhelmed, uh, basically. But I'm ready for tomorrow. Tomorrow's another day. There's another battle to be won. So wish me some luck there. But thanks for watching. See you next time. Peace.